Hello again, this is Flug, and I'm the primary developer of this uh, new JSB Sim Flight Dynamics model for the Sopwith Camel for flight gear. And uh, I'm just doing a few uh, different uh, videos that show you some of the interesting aspects of this uh, very interesting aircraft, the Sopwith Camel. And uh, I do want to mention that uh, I've been working uh, pretty hard to develop the flight dynamics model that I'm going to uh, illustrate and explain here, but I, I uh, everything else about the aircraft was developed by other people, this wonderful 3D model and um, all the other aircraft systems and everything uh, that make it look good and uh, work, you know, the little flags that flap and all that stuff you can see out on the end of the wings. All that was done by other people, but so I've just been working on the actual flight dynamics module that that is new, and I've been doing a lot of research into, you know, what, how did the aircraft fly? What did uh, pilots report that it was like? And it, it's really really interesting. One of the main pilots that I've been kind of relying on to tell me, uh, you know, how how this thing works and how it compares to other aircraft is a fellow named Brian Lacomber who was uh, like an air show pilot and did acrobatic type things um, back in the 70s and 80s is when I've been reading his articles and um, he worked for an outfit that had uh, several of these World War I uh, fighters built in replica and so the interesting thing about his flying is, is there are different people who've flown uh, different like historic uh, camels over the years but a lot of times if, if it's a, an original camel you know they're very old and delicate by this time and so they're really pretty careful about how they fly it and they, you know they'll bring it out to an air show they take off they uh, do a flyby they, they don't do that much with it but uh, Lacomber they had these replicas built one of them had a radial engine, which isn't quite like the engines they had uh, back in the day. But the other one had actually a, an authentic uh, rotary engine, which is a type of engine where the the whole engine rotates with the propeller. When, and that's one of the things that makes the camel have its uh, very unique uh, behavior uh, patterns. Uh, just for example, since I'm doing a little right turn here, one of the things that happens with your camel when you're making a right turn um, <laughs> is the nose will rise and then you will stall which is basically what just happened to me if you're making a left turn your nose will dive la like that and uh, the reason for that is because of this giant uh, rotary engine up front so anyway this Brian Lacomber uh, flew uh, a bunch of, you know, sort of what we call normal aircraft, and then he also flew these replica camels. So here's what he has to say about flying this camel. Uh, once in the air, however, you are due for something of a shock. Within seconds of leaving the ground, you are making your first acquaintance with almost total control disharmony. And uh, one reason I wanted to. Uh, fly with this little heads up display here uh, today a little bit. Let's see if we can get to see the part. Yeah, keep your eye on our, our little bubble down here at the bottom with, which shows us how um, coordinated our flight is and you'll notice as soon as you start to make a turn or anything uh, with the camel um, you're likely to be very um, out of uh, coordination here with our turn. See that, that, and that's actually like I'm stepping on the bubble like as hard as it goes, <laughs> and you still like you you cannot bring this turn um, into coordination because of the the way the aircraft work. Cause it just doesn't. You don't have enough rudder authority and you can't do it. Um, the, the the other direction is about the same. So it it um, uh, is just never uh, in the coordinated flight or only rarely, as soon as you use a lot of um, aileron, you know, you're, you're way out of coordinated flight, and, and sometimes you, you just can't bring it back in, no matter how much uh, rudder you use or whatever. It's just the way it works. So, um, 
almost total control disharmony, he says, and then he goes on to say, the camel is mildly unstable in pitch and considerably unstable in yaw, and both elevator and rudder are extremely light and sensitive with very little feedback pressure. The ailerons, on the other hand, are in direct and quite awe-inspiring contrast. When Herbert Smith designed the camel in the winter of 1916 and 17, aileron technology was very much in its infancy. The prevailing philosophy appears to have been that if you want to roll faster, simply make them bigger. And you can see they're, they're huge. The ailerons, they're, they're very large. The camel accordingly has four enormous young barn doors which require an equally enormous force to be moved quickly. And unfortunately this isn't something, <clears throat> since we don't really have force feedback in uh, flight gear, we can't really uh, model this very well. But you can imagine that, you know, up uh, forward and back on the stick is very light and easy and almost no feedback. Your rudder is very light and easy. And, we're, and then as soon as you go to force that stick left or right, you just have to use this sort of uh, tremendous force. Uh, and that's just the way the kind of leverage works. So you're going to have to imagine that part uh, so I can figure out how to model that uh, in flight gear since we don't have force feedback. But he goes on to say, uh, when you have moved them, the ailerons, the wing section is so degraded by their deflection that the roll response is very slow indeed. Much, much slower than a tiger moths, for example, he compares in this article, which you can find um, <clears throat> if you've downloaded the camel, there's a whole historical document directory, and you can find um, the, uh, this article by Brian Lacomber in there, a PDF of it, and it's very, very interesting, but he compares it quite a bit to the tiger moth, which he also flies and which is, you know, supposedly fairly similar, except for all the ways it isn't. So, um, you, the roll response is very slow, and, and this is very interesting because, um, so here I'm just going to roll, if I can, and we had quite a bit of discussion about some of these characteristics in the Flight Gear Forum, um, when uh, the same Brian Lacomber reported that um, when he was trying to do a slow roll, on the with the camel, uh, it was 22 seconds all the way around, which is a, you know extraordinarily slow. And uh, so people said, "Well, no, that's not right at all." But um, you know, it's just slow, very slow to roll. If anything, like I'm doing these kind of rolls here, and see now I'm getting stuck um, because, and now I'm stalling, and now I'm going to crash. But um, that's what happens to you. You, you uh, we're used to, especially if you're just um, flying in flight simulators. You just aileron left, and you can, you know, roll all the way around with just about any aircraft. And it just ain't true with a, with a real camel. It just, it's very slow to roll. And uh, like if you're going against the torque of the engine. Um, you can get stuck there, and and uh, actual pilots reported that they would go into inverted flight, and they would get stuck there. And if they were too low to the ground, they would just crash, like we just did. So that that's all very realistic. And if there's anything that's not realistic, like if you counted that, that those these aren't exactly when he's talking about a slow roll. That's an exact acrobatic um, maneuver, and like I'm not exactly doing what he's describing, but we're able to roll faster than 22 seconds. Um, so if anything, um, our modeling of the aileron, we're, we're, our ailerons are probably a little too powerful. They're certainly, um, you know, not over-exaggerating the slowness. If anything, they're a little faster than the, the real camel was. Uh, so anyway, back to uh, uh, Mr. Lacomber's article. Uh, he says that the roll rate is definitely much, much slower than, say, a tiger moth. Uh, which he's using as a comparison. But then he goes on to say, at the same time, moreover, the aileron drag is quite staggering. If you take your feet off the rudder bar and bank to the left, the camel will instantly yaw sharply to the right and keep going. The effect of aileron drag 
being vastly more powerful than, than the conventional secondary effect of roll. So he's basically making the point here we are from more of the pilot's point of view. Um, you roll to the left, you yaw uh, amazingly far to the right. And as he says, um, when you yaw to the right, um, you know, if, if you did this in a Cessna, you see a little bit of yaw to the right too, but the roll, you know, sort of almost instantly overpowers the effect of the little bit of yaw uh, in the opposite direction, and, and you soon find yourself, you know, going the way you meant to. But in the camel, the, the way the things work, I mean, actually the yaw is the primary effect, and, and the roll is a secondary effect, and the yaw is very large and strong, and the roll is relatively weak and slow. And then the drag, uh, which he points out, which is what causes that that yaw. Um, watch the uh, speed speedometer uh, over here in our uh, heads-up display, and you see as soon as I put on all that um, aileron, the speed um, slows down a lot. It's like four giant speed brakes. I mean, think of you know like a fighter aircraft today that has like a speed brake. And like some of those speed brakes <laughs> are not as big as those four ailerons all put together. A and then in addition, um, one reason you get so much yaw is, you know, look at the aspect ratio of our camel. The wings are relatively much longer. And um, now we're getting a real good look at it as I crash. Um, but there we are. The wings are relatively longer. Uh, here to here is it's much longer than here to here, and then you have these four giant kind of speed brakes way out on the end of that uh, long lever, and relatively little uh, here in the middle to keep things stabilized in that yaw direction, and then these huge levers way out here on the end that is destabilizing, and that's why you get that effect, and uh, so. That was uh, Lacombre's uh, impression of flying the camel as a sort of uh, 20th century, late 20th century pilot who was uh, more used to flying sort of conventional aircraft. But I think it, it, the way he explains it, you know, it, is very much like the way we experience it. Um, you don't expect to get in an aircraft and, woo, that was the ailerons, you know. Why are the ailerons even doing that? And um, and then the rudder, here's rudder, here I'll turn on the heads up, uh, the rudder is down here in the heads up, you know, the rudder is relatively weak, there's far, uh, uh, total right rudder, total left rudder, and, um, so that's just not what, what we expect out of an aircraft. And in those days, here's the rudder from the side. You can see how small that rudder is. Like a Cessna, for example, has a rudder that's you know several times bigger and so more powerful than, than what this aircraft had. And yet at the time, I mean, this was reputed to be, you know, the, the, uh, the reputation of the Camel in World War I was this nimble fighter, quick to turn. Okay, here, here's the quick turn. <laughs> That's the fast direction, right? Of course, this is a roll, but you know every turn has to start with a roll. Here's the um, other direction to turn, uh, and this was a nimble, a quick, nimble fighter. Uh, well, it, like a Cessna is probably uh, you know many times more nimble in some ways, uh, but where its nimbleness does come in, I mean, once you've done this kind of ponderous roll, which everyone reports as being ponderous. Um, where you can get a lot of speed is when you start using that uh, the uh, elevators in the back. They're, they're very powerful and in fact as you can see powerful enough to make you stall and spin if you're trying to turn too fast in that direction. But the, ailer, the elevators are relatively powerful moving to this way but the rudder, see there's the rudder and the roll is relatively weak and slow and ponderous and, and has these you know sort of terribly bad uh, adverse effects.